Um, hello, everyone. Um, I guess we are starting a little bit late, but we are starting. Um, thanks for, for joining this session. Um, I'm going to talk about Kanban is the new Scrum. Um, sorry, I don't speak French, so you have to tolerate uh, English for this session. Um, this is what um, the conference organizers uh, asked me to put as a second slide for the, for the sponsors. Thanks to them for making this session happen. Um, a little about myself, I'm Shaheen, Shaheen Shaydai. I'm from Toronto, Canada. Um, if you hear a little bit of accent, it's because I lived in the West, um, West Coast. Now I'm in Toronto. Um, and that's a joke, I'm from Iran. So if you hear an accent, that's why, why that is. I, um, I'm an entrepreneur and a coach. Um, I started my own consulting company two years ago and it's thriving. I started a program called Elevate to Coach program, which is a six month program to get you to an agile coach, which last week I signed my first client, which is awesome. Um, if you want to learn more about that, let me know afterwards. Um, what, what it gives me to talk about Kanban is a new Scrum is um, the knowledge and expertise that I have coaching teams and coaching organization through them. Uh, I never brag about the certifications that I have, but I have 15 of them. So in DevOps, in Scrum, in Kanban, like you name it. I have in J2E, um, I have in Linux, so from those old days. Um, so that's how it, um, I can, at least when you are hearing me, you hear someone that has experience and knowledge at the same time, um, talking about Kanban is a new Scrum. Um, before, before getting there, I want to ask you guys, if you want, go to a Slido and enter the code Agile Tour and answer this question right now or throughout this session. Um, in your experience, which is most successful when it comes to Agile transformation? Whatever your thoughts are, um, you can put there. Um, the promise of this session was to give you guys, take you through three um, scenarios that I have um, experience as moving from a Scrum to Kanban or vice versa. Uh, while pr um, pr uh, preparing the slide, I figured out that 45 minutes is not, the time is not enough to go through the whole thing. I have the three uh, scenarios here. I promise to, to uh, publish them. And if I don't, take, uh, don't find the time to go over all of them, um, you can talk to me later on. But the first scenario that I'm going to talk about has most of the um, value there. Um, before talking about um, getting into the scenarios, this is a very brief introduction to Scrum and Kanban. Um, Scrum is started from the idea that Takenuchi and Nonaka had in 1986 in an HBR article that they wrote the new new product development game and um, they compared um, this uh, product development to a rugby team and called it a scrum. Um, and in 1995, Jeff Sutter and Ken Schweber um, termed the scrum, coined the term scrum there. Um, David Anderson, with his work at 20, 2004 um, in Microsoft, and later on he coined the um, term to, from 2006 to 2007, he um, brought the Kanban mindset into software development. Um, I don't go into details of the Kanban versus Scrum. I, I'm, I, I'm, I think you guys know, know that. Uh, but this is basically very high level of the two um, differences between the two. Uh, when we talk about um, Scrum, it's, it's mainly a, a time box event. It's going from one week to three uh, to four weeks. It has it has daily stand-up. It has all these things. It's not all that. It's uh, but but the notion that you see is all that. And uh, Scrum is m and Canva is more about the flow and how to optimize that. Um, original in original days, they were talking about bottlenecks. And I didn't get that much of Patrice talk about lean and agile, that they are not um, comp um, equal to each other. But if you think about it, um, Kanban is more on the lean thinking side and bringing those lean um, thought processes into agile. So um, are you guys ready for me to tell you a story? And the first one, um, first one and the most important one of them. And by the way, all 
this is a disclaimer. All, all the things that you are seeing, if you see the resemblance in the real life with the, with the project that you know, with the people that you know, they are all coincidental. There is nothing to, to have um, um, me quote on it. Um, and this is from um, South Park. I'm not sure if you see it or not, but this is like a um, disclaimer from that scenario. So the first story, it's about a government organization and my engagement with them. Um, this government organization, um, they had a unique um, business model. Their business model was um, in such a way that they didn't have any comp competition. So there is no urgency to change. The people that work in a certain area of um, certain area of business, they had to go there, come to them, and pay duty fees and all that. So. Um, Again, it wasn't that they needed to change or they needed to do something differently. Um, it was a large organization comparatively, and it was there for, for, the long, for a very long time. Um, and in this organization, um, the CIO's direction, this goes back maybe 10 years ago, was that we want to change and we want to um, make things different. We want to be more productive. And through that whole process, uh, they had three people, or I call them three thought leaders of Kanban that came out of that. So these three people, two of them were the two people that become the first Kanban coaching professionals around the world. So, and this came out of this government organization. One of them um, started his own lean um, courses and lean change management courses. Um, they, they all of the, uh, the actual, the two of them wrote books uh, which are now are being looked at and they are using these for book clubs and they are very highly regarded too. Um, one of them has um, nominated 2014 for a Brickell Key nomi nomination. Do you guys know what, what that is? That is the highest um, award that you can get in Kanban community. So if in the Kanban community you are active, you are contributing to that, they get you nominated, and then you get, um, get the award. Unfortunately, that person didn't get the 2014 prize, but that person was nominated for that. So this is just to tell you that in the government, um, this can happen, this, and it happened in Canada. Um, let's look, look, at, look at a little deeper what was, was there. there. Um, so it was a big program that uh, they brought um, a big consulting company to help them with. Um, they, and you could see the sign. The sign was that this is a panorama of a really huge room that they had their Kanban boards at the portfolio level, at the program level, and then at the team level that you can go and see. And it was, um, if, you, if you compare it to the um, government where they work, and they, the way they work is typically, I'm not sure how it's in France, but in Canada, there are cubicles, you go to your own cubicle, do your work, and you go home. There's not much happening in terms of like, uh, going and having like a daily stand-up and um, talking to other people. But this was um, revolutionary in, in that time. Like you, people go to that room to get that update. Leaders go to that room to find out. And you could see another sign was that a big consulting company was there to help them through the whole process. And the, the company was not only there to help them through the management layer, but it was at the ground level too. It was doing the job as well. Um, and at some time, uh, they decided, okay, so this, this program um, deemed successful and said, okay, so agile transformation is something that we should uh, go on um, and continue doing that. And let's expand that to other parts of our organization, shall we? And the question was that it was lots of um, support and lots of um, money spent. Shall we, do, shall we try something different? And then decided... Oh, the people are talking about the Scrum these days. Maybe we shall try that, and it seems um, successful. And um, what everyone else doing it, and it seems very good candidate for development teams. Why sh shouldn't we do that? Um, they decided to do that, but at that point of time, um, there were, um, this is a symbol or the a shuhari written in um, Japanese. 
um, they uh, they weren't at the high level or at the real level uh, or um, expert enough to make make that decision um, to go to the next level or to apply can uh, apply scrum to their teams anyhow they started that and they seem that uh, scrum working well for the development teams but it's not working as we wanted we don't see the done done happening and when the development is making the things done or mark, mark them done it's not getting to the production so that people can use that. There are lots of other activities needs to happen after that. Um, there are lots of hands off happening. There are lots of miscommunications happening there after the development team is saying that. So the Scrum was successful at the team level, but it wasn't successful at the bigger picture level for them. And lots of dependencies that they need to go through that and figure out how, what to do after the development is done. Uh, so for um, so this is an example of um, four teams that they were doing uh, they were interacting with the development team security uh, tooling incident support and infrastructure so they they started to uh, implement or use a scrum for these teams say okay so if the development teams are doing a scrum why don't we use a scrum for for example our security team or for incident support team and imagine that if you're in incident support, your nature of work is so disruptive that you don't uh, want, you don't need a daily stand-up. A daily stand-up would be a burden to you. It would be um, um, against your nature of work. You, are, you don't want to go and say, hey, I know it's a severe tree or very urgent production issue that you guys have, but I have to go my to, to my stand-up because that's the most important thing. My scrum master asked me to do that. Um, so, or, or product or a sprint planning. At the sprint planning, there is not much that you are planning for coming. You are not planning for the incident to come in. As, as they are coming in, they are, uh, you re react to them. Um, so, Scrum was not deemed effective for these kind of um, work that they wanted to do. So they said, okay, so for these um, kind of work, let's do Kanban. And we, we, were, we were good at doing Kanban. So why not go back to do Kanban and do Kanban at the infrastructure teams? Um, and we are going to hire a bunch of coaches. Um, me was one of them to help them with uh, their Kanban transformation at the infrastructure team level. Um, and this, this was when the prior to me being hired was that the CIO has changed. And it wasn't the same CIO. The CIO has retired and there was another CIO. And the vision was not um, be the same as before that we are going to give them as much as support and as much as um, motivation they want to change. Um, but we just need to do something to, for them to be more effective. So here. My engagement started here, and I was like, okay, so this is amazing. I'm going there. I was so excited. Um, I was working with one of the um, best people in the field, the, uh, the Kanban Award Committee nominees. That person was going to be my boss, and it was amazing. This is the... This is a, a flow that we are going to work on. We are going to look at the flow. We are going to uh, make it more efficient, make it more effective, and it's going to be an amazing um, journey for myself and for them. Um, and I was like so excited. But when I get there, I figure out that, oh, um, it's not as I thought that the flow is going to be like that. People there, they are, they are thinking about themselves. They are, we are not agreeing on the, um, the sources of dissatisfaction about the system. We are not going to, um, there is no agreement. There is no, again, urgency to change them. Um, and I was like, if I'm a pragmatic coach, I, I, I don't want to go and say, you guys should, should focus on this whole flow and you can't focus on your own locally optimizing things because that doesn't help the system. So we have started to show them the common denominator to agree upon. We have started to um, work with these two teams first. And although it wasn't the best way to approach it and the best way to show that, um, but... Um, we deem that this is a pragmatic way of going about it. And 
we, we got these two teams through working together, the security and tooling team, after, um, after six months, keep in mind it was a government uh, institution. After six months of working, we got them to a point that they agreed this is our source of this agreement and um, this, this satisfaction. This is what we need to change. This is how we need to change. And um, although, again, um, the whole team was providing a service for, the, for a dev team, if you think about it, the development team, they, they don't need to um, be concerned about if I have an incident or how, how am I going to deal with my infrastructure? Why, why shall I be required to think about their uh, infrastructure needs and, and um, react to that? But, but we, we get them to a point that we merge these two as one service and they were working together. What happened at last, um, I'm not there anymore. Um, and no more transformation is there. Organizational wide sees has happened for transformation, agile transformation. Um, there are no more consultants there. We were two consultants there, um, two independent consultants to be Kanban coaches. There are no more consultants at every level, um, at the PM level, at the development level. Um, and it was a um, company-wide um, policy that um, applied because they, they had a change in their direction. Um, when you think about back, was it because of the vision that was not consistent? Was it because of the way that they introduced change? Was it because the layers of decision making? Um, we never know. Was it the culture, the root cause that we can think about? Um, it's a very complex domain to think about that. Um, but again, if you think back to the days that they were one of the um, main organization driving agile transformation with Kanban, and the result of that was that they, they raised three thought leaders within that organization, and there were more than them. There were more than them. There were some of the best coaches that I know in Toronto that came from that organization. Um, so what's, what's the lesson here? The lesson here is that you can locally optimize um, in Kanban or Scrum. Both won't be that effective. Um, you can achieve some result. Um, the leadership direction is, is um, very effective in how you um, introduce, how you go about the agile transformation. If it's Kanban, it's, or a scrum again. If there's no real urgency, if the business model for them was mon monopoly, so they, they, no matter what, the, the money is coming for them. So they didn't need to really change and the, uh, the business model was not changing so that they need to change. Um, a Smith to market was not a concern. And again, um, I talk about this two times. Shall we put all uh, the pins on the culture? Again, with the same culture, uh, they raised thought leader. So there was only some changes that happened to that organization. So um, why not adopt Kanban in this kind of um, situation would be, if don't adopt Kanban, um, when I look back at this scenario, don't adopt, I wouldn't adopt Kanban because of these two reasons. Um, agree to pers because we couldn't agree to pursue improvement through evolutionary change. That was one of the main reasons because as much as they said, with one of the teams that I was working, they um, identified one of their work types to be enhancements. And in my mind was like, you are identifying work type as enhancement, so then it means that the enhancement or the process enhancement is not going to be your main concern, so it's going to be one of your work types. Um, so that was a flag for me, and that was a flag that there is no uh, agreement that we need to pursue change even to talk about evolutionary change. Um, in, and if you can't find encouraging acts of leadership at every level, in this organization, later on that I left, I figured out that some of these managers were consultants as well. So they were not there for the long time. They were, they were there for the term of their contract. Um, and they knew that after two years, they are not going to get extended. So they were looking only for that two years to get, get, get the team somewhere. And if you can't focus on the customer. But is, is that all? Is that um, a more a story that I can tell you around it, maybe in depth? Um, so let me tell you um, a little bit of more story about 
speed of things. Um, I started my career uh, in a startup. In a startup, um, it was a very, um, when I started in that startup, it was not one of the early days of a startup, but it was at the 200 stage that they got in a maturity level. But even at that level, the things were happening fast. Decisions were happening fast. Like if you want to do something, it was very fast. It was like it was like a day turnaround time there. So if you wanted to, uh, even at that time, I, if we wanted to deploy something to production, we could do that in one day. Like in, it was 13 years ago or 12 years ago that I was working at start, a, that startup. It's still in the banks, we don't have that yet in in. in at least the area that I'm working in, some part of it. Then I moved to telecommunications, and it was like, oh, oh my God, the things that we have been doing in, in the startup is going to take longer and longer and longer. At that time, I wanted, oh my God, this, I can't believe there is something more than this. Like, and then I moved to banks, and to the, compared to the bank, banks and telecommunication, and then I moved to the government, and the government was felt like after I, I told you after six months I got two teams, and these two teams were not huge teams, like were seven or eight team people with some management there to get to an agreement that they need to pursue some change, and it wasn't a big uh, thing that I got. so that that's one thing to think about. Another thing was in, in that organization was the work-life balance was a huge thing. I'm not sure um, how, how is it in France, but uh, after a month, this, this is an exact, I'm not going to tell you the story, but I'm going to give you a fact. After a month, I was trying to get these VPs to talk to each other, and um, finally I got them to agree on a 9.30 on Monday morning that we are going to come here and talk about for half an hour that we want to uh, pursue this transformation. Amazing. I loved it. On Monday morning, I got there early. I set up the room. Um, I sent an um, 8.30, 8.45 reminder that we are going to meet 9.30. No responder come back. I was like, okay, everyone fine and dandy. I went to the room and no one showed up. I'm like, okay, what's happening? So did I put, the, there's only one office address here. Did I put another office address? Are people going somewhere else? The timing, so I was questioning everything. And then I, I saw one of the directors passing by. I'm like, oh, hey, uh, weren't we supposed to meet here? I was like, oh, no, that VP called sick. You didn't hear that? I'm like, no, he, d he called sick, but he replied, he approved my calendar invite. I said, yeah, he called in sick. And so he called in sick. He didn't reject the calendar. He didn't put the autoresponder. He didn't even notify me um, as the organizer of that meeting that I'm not being there. And so then later I figure out in the government, when you are sick, you are sick. You just send a note to your manager and that's it. So you don't touch your um, handhold device or you don't touch your computer at all anymore because you're, you have a work-life balance that they um, are very concerned about that. And that was the environment that I was working in. Um, it was a good learning care for me. Um, Another or, um, part of the um, story was about the team. So um, this shows three people, but think of them as uh, six people here. They were a team of six, but the layers of the management on that uh, six people were four. So they had two senior manager uh, managing these six people, and they had one director that working with them. Um, and then there was a VP here, and I haven't um, depicted another VP that they were uh, discussing and the CIO at top. So even if you look at this, why do we need this many layers of management? And these people were trying to get information from them, the senior manager, present to the director. They would sit there and talk about something, uh, some proposal, and they present it to the VP, and then they come back and tell the team that this is a proposal, and the team goes back and says, no, we cannot do this, because this is what we, we meant um, when we talked to you about. So there were lots of, um, I, I call it doers versus deciders, um, this is something that um, Esther Derby talked about it in Ottawa as well. Um, um, so for, for the team of six, if you want to have deciders that are not part of the team, I can, I can, um, I can relate to that. I, I like it to be part of the team, the deciders, but if at least don't have this much layer of um, hierarchy there. Um, it doesn't help with being uh, effective. Um, 
Oh, and the decision making becomes this complicated um, web of how we are making decisions. There is no real framework, and it's making it very complicated. And by people not doing the groundwork, it's going to be not um, that impactful as well. Okay, so um, Kanban or Scrum, what's, what's, what's the real lesson? So I, I gave you some in depth um, stories as well. So um, it, I, I guess it doesn't matter um, which one you pick. Um, it doesn't even matter if your culture is ready or not. So some people are talking about, oh, we need to have a right culture or we need to change the culture to make it ready. Um, again, going back to the, um, the same organization, before uh, they started Scrum, they were so good with Kanban that three of them are th were the thought leaders, still they are the thought leaders of the Kanban world. I, I, I say it matters how much you are prepared for change. So it's all about how much um, and Kanban and Scrum and all these are tools and frameworks and methodologies that we use. But if you are ready for change and if you have things ready for in your organization to support the change, that's how you can become um, successful. Um, I guess I have, and have you seen this? So who wants change? Everyone wants change. Who wants, who wants to change? Everyone become quiet, and who wants to lead the change? No one would be there. So this is one um, famous uh, caricature that I like. Are you guys ready for the second story? Yeah, not, not um, uh, sleep, sleepy yet. <laughs> So uh, the second story is about one of the, I call it the big bank story. Um, uh, it's one of the biggest bank in Canada. It has presence in the US as well, and in the US they are, they are big. Um, they are not in Europe, I believe. Um, and I, I was hired as um, the Agile program coach. At that time, um, I was trying to become consultant, I was trying to become an the boss, um, my Xbox, convinced me that this is this is what you want. You want to be this agile program coach, you get this experience. I was like, I, yeah, he, she sold me on it. And it's a multi-million dollar program. It's, it's it spans over multiple years. So think of the complexity. Think of what you can you can achieve with this one. A few hundreds people are there, and they were doing agile for a while. I was like, okay, so this is like not not a starting teams in Agile, but I'm going there, they're mature enough, I'm going to get them to next level. So it's exciting about me. Oh, and they started from something called Rapid. I'm not sure if you guys know Rapid methodology, it's something uh, iterative kind of methodology. And then they were trying to move to Scrum and the story would be, we ended up in Kanban and I tell you the whole story. But this is like a very brief um, depiction of that. This was my perception. So I'm going to work in a value stream teams, which are small, which uh, there are some scrum master working together to make sure that they remove impediments at the team level and they are going fast to um, production. And I'm going to work with VPs and directors because it's a big program that I'm going to work with. Um, and they are for, for there for over two years. So they're, they should be mature enough. So I'm thinking about SOS like a scrum of a scrum, some, some uh, at scale stuff that I can introduce. And I was so excited about that. Um, when, I, when I got there, I figured out, oh, um, my engagement started here. When I got there, I figured out they have an, um, um, first of all, they are, they are not like um, horizontal, they're more vertical, sliced. Um, and they have a concept called umbrella level. So the management and all the support are going to be umbrella, I'm like amazing. Like in the banks, they have an umbrella, they're working as a scrum master, they are, they are shielding their teams from, from the outsiders. I'm like, this, this is the organization that I want to be in. After a while, I figure out this is the umbrella level that they thought about. Like, so someone as a, a senior scrum master holding the umbrella for the um, leadership and all the poor, uh, developers and the tester are around them being bombarded with all the um, questions and all that. Um, and I figured out that because of the huge transformation that they had, they asked all of the PMs to become a Scrum Master. Um, I'm not saying a PM becoming a Scrum Master is necessarily a bad thing. It's, it's a good thing. You bring lots of experience of a program management or project management. But if you do that, through one decision at night, and the next day you ask all of your PM to become a Scrum Master without enough support and education providing them, it's not going to be very easy um, um, ride for you. 
Um, and then I figure out, oh, this is the team size. It's not like a small team size. There's all of these scrum masters working with people that they don't even know how many there are. I asked one of them, okay, so how is the testing is being done? Oh, that person is representing testing. And okay, so how many testers do you have? I don't know, he provides the updates and he has a team in India that uh, he, he talked. I'm like, okay. Um, and that time I was like, have you guys heard of the two pizza rule? So if your team is more than, bigger than, t um, uh, bigger than um, that you can feed them with two pizza, it's not an effective team. And they were like more than like four or five pizza team. Um, and I figured out that the program manager, uh, this scrum master or a senior scrum master was actually a program manager. They, um, they never told him that you're going to be a scrum master, that you're going to help other scrum masters or an agile coach helping others. This is actually a program manager. And what they were doing at the meetings or the scrum of a scrum which is run by program manager, on a daily basis, they had one hour they sit together and they find out what's missing. And as I said, these were vertical teams. So this Scrum Master spent time with the team figuring out what they, what they are being blocked. And then they come to this meeting telling the program manager that because of this team and because of this person, I'm blocked. So it become more like I will find you and I will assign a Jira ticket to you kind of um, session rather than they help each other and they remove impediments for the teams. It was more like, oh, I'm blocked because of this guy here. And he was like, I'm blocked because of this one. And then, oh, I was blocked because of this one. You wouldn't get nowhere. Um, and we figure out that it's not only the umbrella people that they say we are, we are going to stay at the umbrella level. The middle managers are all over the place and these people are talking to their middle managers and they rely on middle managers a lot, which, which is not a bad thing if the middle manager is empowering you to become, um, the ele elevate you to the next, per, uh, to the next level. But if they are uh, taking, act, taking part in retro and taking action items might be something to, that you need to work on. Um, and we find out um, even there are some vendors that they are, the team is talking to that we didn't know that these are the things that are happening. So there were lots of um, communication issues and decision-making issues mostly were happening there with the middle managers. Um, and, on, and with the communication, uh, the more that you have the um, people there, your um, complexity of communication goes higher. So the complexity is the order of n to the power of two. So for example, for six people, you have 15 lines of communication. For 12 people, you have 66 lines of communication. And on top of that, we didn't know who we are communicating to. Sometimes we were communicating to this guy here. Sometimes we were communicating because of the huge number of people in the teams. And these are, again, the way that they were doing a scrum. There, and all of a sudden, we figure out in the mainframe, or they called it host, there's only one, this guy, that whenever we talk to him, he's solving everything. But he's not present at any of the meeting invite that we sent. But figure, we figure out, he was like a backdoor to all of our requests. So when we figure out that guy, we never, um, we played by, by the system. We never changed the system anymore. So we didn't um, go to invite him to our sprint review, invite him to the stand-up, invite him to retrospective. But we are using him as, as we want. And we figure out that the system is encouraging that. So the system is built in a way that you find, you can find these people, this person here, this person, and this person here too. Um, It, it, so at this time, it wasn't it wasn't effective. Um, the 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 result that we were producing wasn't effective, and it was more than two years that we were doing agile, or that organization were doing agile. And they said, okay, so we are doing agile for two years, and this is why don't we do agile in other part of our organization? So they decided we do agile in budgeting land, and we are going to um, I then we are going to divide the projects or the work that coming the teams in two different ways, projects and products. For projects, you are going to, every three months you come back and if you are um, getting results, we are going to refund you. But for product, 
you don't need to come back because you are going to work on the product for a long time. And so we give you money as you, you want. So imagine what? Uh, with all these challenges we had, we said, okay, um, the leadership decided we are going to have a product model, but, but underlying is the same thing. Um, we are going to have a chief product owner, which is going to add more hierarchy to, to these things. And, 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 and product model didn't, didn't, um, didn't help at all as well. Um, and then there were some, uh, some of the leadership went to um, some training about Kanban, find some Kanban coaches and Kanban consultants. They were sold on Kanban because Again, back to my own first one that was um, horizontal, they figured out, oh, this is a service that we are providing. We need to look at the bigger picture, and which is amazing, which is amazing to do that. It's amazing to look at that flow and try to um, uh, make it um, smoother. And with Kanban, you get uh, typically the better path of no resistance. And uh, you start from where you are. Um, but we never, as, uh, uh, we never address these issues. We never address these issues that the Scrum Masters are coming and talking to the program and pin it them. We never address this guy here. We never address the middle manager. And it was um, a lipstick on a pig again. Like We are doing Kanban because it's a hype, because someone is selling that this is a um, silver bullet solution which I, they, they have tried it twice already with Rapid and Scrum and the customization of that. Um, again, still middle management, old habits are there. Um, and the result was we were back to locally optimizing. We were back to figuring out at the UI level, the UI team, what, what that person or what that team is doing. Again, everything around it didn't change. Um, what happened at last? No more transformation. No transformation director left at, at that big bank. So, and they were many of them. So throughout the years, there, they have been, um, you get one of these emails that that person is no longer with the company. Um, I got um, some of them and I left and I'm still in touch with them and there's no more of them left there. Um, was it the silos? Was it the middle management that didn't help us? Um, was it the Scrum for them? Or And again, it's a very complex domain. Um, the lessons here was, um, this is um, what I came up with last night, become productive over following the hype. So if you hear um, Scrum is a hype, if you hear Canva is a hype, don't follow that. F think about your ways of becoming productive. Breaking the silos, culture of brain, finger pointing, avoid that. Um, locally optimizing, think about the whole system and you need to be courageous to think about the whole system versus your team. Um, and willingness to address that. Again, do adopt Kanban if the environment, if you can get uh, an agreement to pursue change and you can encourage acts of leadership at all level and you can focus on the customer. And these are um, um, three of the principles of Kanban that I just highlight. Um, Again, what's, what's, what's the real lesson? Um, it doesn't matter what you pick. It, it doesn't matter if your culture is ready. It matters how much you are prepared for change. That, that's the whole message that I wanted to send. Um, I am two minutes um, be, um, more than I had to spend. Um, I had one other um, um, story that I have to tell you guys, uh, but I don't think I find time to go through this. Um, I, I send it your way, um, but um, if, if you want to talk to me about um, these things, I would be happy to connect with you and learn more from you. If you ever uh, come to Toronto, let me know. These are the altitude and um, uh, longitude of Toronto, if you don't know that. Uh, and you can connect with me with li on LinkedIn, Twitter, and check my website. I would am um, happy to um, hear your thoughts on the talk as well and your experiences as well. Um, thank you so much.